What's up guys, Max here and welcome back. Today I have a very interesting video for you about the Ryzen 7 2700X and how to tune it to get the best performance out of it. I've spent the past week testing all the methodology I know to overclock the CPU, like precision boost overdrive, base clock OC, negative voltage offset, manual overclock and a mix of the various techniques. But this is only a first topic in this video, you will find as well memory tuning and how the cooling affect the performance. So now I have like 50 slides for you, sit tight and let's get started. Before moving forward I would like to show you some slides from AMD that explain how this CPU works. Quoting AMD, Sense MI technology is a set of learning and adapting features that helps the AMD Ryzen processor customize its performance. Well, that is actually true, the Ryzen 7 2700X is a very smart CPU. There are something like 1000 sensors inside that constantly monitor voltage, temperature, frequency and much more. One of the most important features is the Precision Boost 2. If the temperature and power limits are below the safe threshold, the CPU overclocks itself to its maximum limit, both in single core and all cores, depending on the workload. With this feature, you can have higher single core frequency that is not normally possible with a manual overclock and at the same time it adapts when an all core boost is needed. And then we have the XFR2, Extended Frequency Range 2. This is another cool feature, pun intended. Keeping the thermos low is very important when doing heavy tasks. With a powerful cooling system we can have more than 100 megas boost on all cores over the stock cooler. The first method I'm going to show you is the Precision Boost Overdrive. Even if this feature is present on most boards and works quite well on Ryzen, you need to know that it is made for the Threadripper lineup. When activated, it raises the power limits in order to sustain higher clock both in single core and all cores. Combined with an improved cooling, the CPU will reach almost the silicon limit. You will see the numbers in a moment. The base configuration for the test is an ASUS Crosshair 7 with of course the Ryzen 7 2700X, a kit of HyperX Fury that is very cheap, it's like 3200 MHz C18, 16GB kit that can be found more or less around 110, 105 bucks. So it's a very cheap but nice kit to start and to begin with. And then everything is cooled by a custom loop by EK. I have free not to a fans on it and the radiator is a free fan XL radiator. So it's kind of overkill and it's probably the best cooling for normal cooling you can have on this platform. In the test you're going to see there are as well some gaming benchmark and for that I'm using a Zotac RTX 2080, the non-TI version. Now I'm running at default speed. As you can see the clock is going up and down based on the load, so the voltage. If I run Cinebench R15, you will see that we have more or less 3.97 gigahertz with a voltage of 1.25. To activate Precision Boost Overdrive is very simple. You just open Ryzen Master, select a custom profile, Precision Boost Overdrive, you set this to the maximum, and you click apply. So now you will see that the frequency spikes higher and check what happens with the Cinebench R15. As you can see we have 4.1, 4.070, something like this, so we have gained more or less 100 megahertz. And as you can see here we are always hitting some kind of limit. Okay, we have gained as well 50 points, more or less, 40 points. This can be mixed with another technique that is called negative voltage offset. Basically, if you reduce the voltage for the CPU, it will draw less power and it stays a bit cooler. But this is highly dependable on the silicon quality of the CPU. Now I'm using a, a golden sample and I can lower from the zero to negative 0.1 volt and is a lot but 
I think that with a normal retail sample, you can lower by 0.05 or 0.04. So this is really based on luck and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not advising you to do that because when you lower too much the voltage, the system will become unstable. So now I have lowered the voltage with an offset. I have my precision boost overdrive on and see what happens. Well, at first you will see that the clock stays higher. As you can see here, we have 4.123, 124, and yes, the system is running faster, but again, with this, uh, with this method, uh, lowering the voltage is not safe, uh, at least for a normal retail sample. Usually, when you lower too much the voltage, you will have system instability or crash, game crash or situation that, well, it gives you more frustration than real benefit. Another technique is called base clock overclock. What it means? It means that you are raising the base clock of the motherboard, so everything on it have a higher clock. And this technique allows you to see the CPU frequency goes up to 4.5 GHz. And well, even if it seems a nice thing, keep in mind that you're overclocking also the memory and you, have, you may have some instability for overclocking the memory and uh, the CPU is very smart, so it doesn't allow you to stay too much at that frequency. So at the end, the system loses efficiency because when you go higher with the clocks, the efficiency goes down. And at the end, this is the worst technique because it's way worse than default. But you will see that in the benchmarks. If you take a look at this, you will see that during this test, there's a multiple test that goes from up start up, spreadsheet, rendering, and gaming. You will see that the, the CPU records frequency clock very high, like 4.478 or 4.5 gigahertz. But at the end of the day, this is not good for the system because Ryzen is smart. And uh, if I recall correctly, it can switch frequency like 1000 times per second. So what you see here is not what really is happening inside the CPU. Here you will see the peak, but you will not see the real average for the frequency. So now it's time to show you some numbers. So check this out.
As we have just seen, except for heavy tasks like rendering, overclocking the CPU is not that useful, and in fact, so with some method like base clock overclock, is even worse than default. But now, it's time to talk about memory. This is the most important part of this video, because even if we cannot get the efficiency out of the CPU by overclocking it, we can work on memory. With the right memory kit and the right setup, we can really boost our performance, especially if you're a gamer. See for yourself. That was very interesting, right? But uh, a good memory kit, uh, a good BDI kit like the Flare X is still very expensive. And here's come the third part of this video. Is a big cooling system, an expensive cooling system, really necessary? Check this out. I think you are very surprised by the result, but my consideration is that it's not the cooling that is not necessary, but the stock cooler combined with the features inside the CPU does a really good job. So another point for the value of the CPU, keep in mind that when you buy the CPU you have also the cooler that as you have seen is very very efficient. So the stock cooler will do just fine especially if you're a gamer. You can change it for something that is different aesthetically or you can change it for a lower noise. But honestly, this is not a noisy cooler. And well, if you do rendering or heavy stuff, you're doomed. You need to buy something better than this if you want to squeeze some performance out of it. Or you can just leave it as it is and work on the memory buying a very nice memory kit like the Flare X. So, 
Now, I think that we are done. I hope that I didn't bore you too much. And as always, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like if you like it, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one.